Hello YouTubers, welcome back to the Holtz Mission channel. And uh, with this I'd like to thank all the new subscribers that have came on board. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the internal workings of a Behringer lathe. Not all lathes are created equal. Um, this old girl, the clutches has been slipping in it and uh, it started smoking here a while back every time I'd run it in low gear. So it's time to open her up and uh, readjust the clutches. So let me, I've done some prep work here, um, got the, the cover cleaned up and uh, getting ready to open it up. So I'll get this opened up off camera and then I'll bring you back in to show the internal workings of it. I did uh, find the, uh, the operator's manual for it and uh, it's an oldie moldy but goldie and uh, so yeah, trying to decipher it. It's the old dittos. I don't know if you guys, uh, some of you older guys might remember ditto copies uh, from the 50s and 60s. Uh, kind of like photocopying but a little different. And that's what these are and they're a little hard to read sometimes. Um, I'll show them to you here in a little bit after I get the cover off of this and uh, we'll take a closer look at the guts of this thing. So. Hang with me and uh, enjoy the ride. Alrighty, well, got the cover off, and unfortunately, it fell off on me. It uh, was a little stubborn coming off. The gasket on there was holding it on, and uh, it fell onto the floor. So now I got to clean the inside of it up. You know, um, cleanliness, of course, is next to godliness on machinery. And uh, the reason being for it, when you start taking stuff apart, you don't have a bunch of crud and crap falling into the machine. Um, that's for you newbies out there that are, you know, just getting into the stuff. A lot of people like to, you know, take shortcuts and, and not clean up machinery. Of course, a lot of us, uh, or the novice machinists out there, like to clean up their machines, and that's the, the best thing to do. That way, you can see any potential problems with the machine um, and uh, act accordingly. So, you know, you guys out there that are cleaning up your machines, kudos for those of you who are a little bit uh, reluctant to clean up your machines. I do recommend that you. You get on it uh, when repairs come up that uh, your machine, you know, and the other thing is, of course, you know, hands. Um, if you clean up your machine, you're, you're not going to be wallowing in the muck so much. So let me uh, go mobile here. I got my remote all greasy and grimy now since all this stuff is on my hands. And I'll probably get the camera all grimy. Um, I'm going to wipe my hands off here on my overalls. And... Uh, Got my trusty dusty little flashlight here, and uh, we'll go mobile, and I'll show you the internal workings of this guy. Alrighty, this machine has two sets of clutches, one for the reverse and one for the forward, and you can see it right here. The clutch plates are, you know, quite a ways apart, so that means this uh, ring out here. Let me try and. Uh, Hold flashlight and camera in one hand and point with the other. Let's see if this will work. Especially with this bad thumb. Okay, right here you can see this ring with the holes in it. And this is the ring that readjusts the clutch according to the poop sheet. So, uh, this is going to have to be turned in. And I'm not sure where there's the, uh, the book was saying something about pins that uh, lock in so I'm gonna have to turn this around by hand a little bit and see where things are uh, located at but over here on the on the other side you can see there's virtually no room in the clutches and these started smoking pretty bad the other day when I started it up and you can see uh, there's been a little heat development there on the out on the shell of the clutch so that tells me they've been getting pretty hot and that's of course why it's been smoking and it smells like burnt oil in here too so it's time to tighten up the ring and see what we can do um, oil consumption in this machine has been a lot higher than re than normal recently too but here's some of the other internal workings this is an old vintage 1955 or something like that I think so this old girl seen her her better days but still runs pretty good and here's the cover 
and you can see on the left hand side of that uh, pin out there right here let me point to it right there there's a little bit of concrete still hanging on to it that's from when the cover fell off so yes I'm grunting because I'm too fat I can't bend over very well here's the the old ditto sheet and this is the instructions for the readjustment of the clutch in the camera it actually appears pretty good but when you look at it uh, under normal light some of the print is faded to the point where you can't hardly read it anymore so let me stick the camera back on the on the uh, tripod so there you can see what I've got ahead of me here today with any luck this won't be too terribly long of a, of a job but uh, first I gotta see what uh, the position is going to be when I engage the uh, the power lever on the other side to where the gear is going to be sitting. So I'll do all that off camera, and then uh, if there's anything you know really monumental to see, I'll bring you guys back in for it. Okay, according to the poop sheet, there is this little tab up here, right here, it needs to be pulled out. This uh, whole ring here needs to turn. So in order to turn that, I've got to pull that tab out and rotate it 90 degrees so that it's out of the slot and then the clutch can be readjusted now I've put the thing in neutral and we're seeing lots of space in between the the clutch plates here I mean that's how much is there here's the other side it doesn't have nowhere near as much so we'll uh, play around with this thing a little bit and uh, see what we can come up with I'll bring you back when, when I get some progress made. Well, here's what the inside of this old girl looks like. Quite the beast, as you can see. Let me pan back here a little bit. Now these tubes you're seeing around here are the oil passages. They distribute the oil throughout the machine. I'm not sure what this box here is. But uh, there is a central oil pump. There is a filter allegedly in that housing there somewhere, right there on the corner. And uh, there's some, some of the gearbox. Let's see, I just had some gear shifting here. There's all kinds of good stuff going on here. Still shifts nice and smooth. The wear on the gears isn't really all that bad, considering this is a 1955 vintage, but the clutches are definitely worn. Here's what this thing looks like when it's running. coming up off the clutches down there. The clutches are way down in the bottom down there. Can't see them from here. But the oil cools the clutch as well as lubricates it, but I have a suspicion that this machine was run without oil for a long time. I'm the first guy in 30 years that's looked after this poor old thing, so hard to say what kind of wears on the lower end of this thing. We just remotorized it a year ago. So anyway, there we go. Repair ended. Operation successful and the patient is alive. Well, YouTubers, that wraps up today's little project. Hope you enjoyed the tour of the lathe. Um, wasn't really much to see other than a bunch of gears whizzing around. But uh, it's always kind of interesting to see how these things are put together on the inside. Quite frankly, <clears throat> until I looked at those clutches, I had no idea. Uh, how they quite work myself. So, uh, first time I've done this, 
<coughs> so uh, there's a <coughs> excuse me maiden voyage on a on a different kind of cruise. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you've got any uh, comments, by all means, let me know in the comment section below. Um, any dialogue is always welcome. If there's uh, any room for improvement, we're all ears. Love to hear from you. And if nothing else, just to say hi and you know whatever you, whatever's on your mind. So that's what that comment section's for. So anyway, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you again soon.